And for more on this incredible rescue operation, let's bring in Mitchell Barak. He's an American-Israeli pollster, a former aide to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, also a speechwriter for former Prime Minister Shimon Peres and Ariel Sharon, and joins us from Jerusalem. Uh, Mitchell, good to see you. I mean, it really is a testament to the professionalism and dedication of the Israeli forces to pluck those four and the others from the clutches of the terrorists of Hamas. Your reaction to this? It's amazing. I mean, we found about it. It's now nighttime. Shabbat is over. The rumors were all over for us that are Sabbath observers and don't turn on the phone. But everyone in the streets here in Jerusalem, in our neighborhood, was uh, celebrating and talking to each other. Uh, as soon as the names were mentioned, many of us knew who who those hostages were, especially Noah Argamani and her very unique story and the pictures from when she was kidnapped on October 7th. It is unbelievable to see those pictures of those people with their families. And we're just hopeful that more hostages will be freed. And it looks like the military operation was extremely daring and successful. And uh, unfortunately, one of the commanders lost his life there. And um, that's a, a very unfortunate thing. But everyone is very, very happy at this point. Uh, that commander, uh, Arnon Zamara, who was a national police counterterrorism right. commander, who was fatally wounded in this. And that there's a photo we're showing now of uh, the commander, Zamara. You have to think of his sacrifice, uh, an indication of what the Israeli people go through. And, and I'm reminded of Jonathan Netanyahu, who lost his life in the daring raid in Entebbe, the prime minister's brother, of course. Speak to me about the resolve of the Israeli people, of the IDF, of men and women, like well, Commander team. Zamara. Uh, that You know, it's interesting. The commander is the person that gets killed because the commander is one of the first people to go into an operation like that. It's not like the commander is in the back, unlike the Islamic resistance Hamas people who hide, you know, put the civilians in front and hide behind it. The Israeli commanders who are much more experienced go in first. And then they, they leave the soldiers behind them. The resolve of the Israeli people is very serious. I mean, I can tell you I have a, a son who's in the, the army, who's in one of these units. Mm. And, and these boys and girls are very, very committed. I come from the generation of people that has seen our children, our sons and daughters, turn into our heroes. These are the ones that are going in. These are the ones that are motivated. These people uh, believe that they have thousands of years of Jewish history and Jewish the Jewish future on their shoulders. And that is why there is such a fight among them to get into the most elite units, to the combat units. And that is why that motivates them every single day. We pray and think of your, your son and, and all the uh, youngsters. Who I, I've met some of them uh, in Israel, the sons and daughters of normal everyday people. Uh, who uh, have the rifle on their back and get, come home and can't tell you exactly where they are deployed. Uh, you know, it's an amazing as American. We don't have that here in our country, but in Israel, you do have that sacrifice. And what is your sense then of other young people on the streets of the country today? They're out in front of the White House uh, saying, free Palestine. How about free Palestine from Hamas? What would you say to those who are criticizing Israel? Yes, there have been mistakes. Yes, there are tragedies. But look at what your country is, is undergoing with a terrorist organization whose uh, headquarters is basically in Iran that wants to wipe out the Jewish state. It, it's a terrible thing. And when we've seen the leader of Iran uh, who uh, tweeted in Hebrew, that is the end of the Zionist entity, we see the beginning of the end. But, you know, what's even more disappointing is when you know, the Iranian president is killed in a, a helicopter crash. No one here in Israel was sorry about that, of course. But yet there was a moment of silence in the United Nations. And the secretary general of the United Nations actually signed the very special condolence book. I mean, what is that? They call for the destruction of another country. They actively, you know, uh, support terror, not only of the Islamic resistance, Hamas, but also the Hezbollah, the party of God in Lebanon, and the Houthis, who are also firing from Yemen on Eilat. What, what do we have with the Houthis? Meaning they see this, their, their nuclear uh, arsenal that they want to want to want to create in order to use against Israel and the Jewish people. So, uh, you know, the Palestinians in Gaza, you know, it, it's quite ironic that Israel left there in, in 2005, you know, in a unilateral withdrawal under Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. I worked in, in that office when he was prime minister, and it was criticized by many Israelis. And, you know, the Hamas, with their 250 uh, miles of tunnels, 
that's a long enough tunnel to go from the Fox studio in New York to the Fox studio on Capitol Hill in Washington. And believe me, you can fit a million people in 250 miles of tunnels. Why is not that the Hamas didn't open any tunnels for any of their people to hide from the Israeli attacks against the terrorists? Meaning it, it, it's, it's so ironic to see what's going on in the United States and on campuses. I mean, it is June, which is Pride Month. We see queers for Palestine, which is ludicrous because there are no queers in Palestine. They're executed. It's not allowed under Islamic law, and there's a capital punishment. In Gaza, in Ramallah, they throw these people off the roofs. But they, they've come up with this. This is the, the, the cause of today to free Palestine. The world has, has become a little bit topsy-turvy at this point. But as you know, you asked about the resilience of the Israeli people. What do the Israelis think? We're used to having the world against us. I can say that having the support of the United States, having the support of the White House, of the Congress, the invitation to Prime Minister Netanyahu to come, a bipartisan invitation, meaning our friends are in the United States and in the normal countries. And there's a lot of countries that are not normal anymore. Because they're, they're not only are they negotiating, they favor terror organizations. They favor those that kill innocent civilians and then hide behind their own innocent civilians. And had the, the, the Palestinians in Gaza, who had an election in 2006, imagine what they could have done with the Gaza Strip. They were so good at building tunnels underground, better than anyone in the world, so good at trying to find better and new and improved ways to kill Israelis, they probably could have made a really great place out of that Gaza Strip, beachfront property with some very smart people there, but they chose, yeah. you know, radical yeah. death and destruction. Radical Islamic terrorism at the expense of Western values. Hamas wants yes. to kill the Palestinians themselves for their own propaganda. Let's hope that the democracy and integrity of the world succeeds, and it will. Mitchell Barak, thank you so much. Thank you. Again, thank you for your family. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.